Ja, Zubrat. Dear guests, how many people doesn't be, speak Estonian? <laughs> how many doesn't speak Estonian? There are some. That's why we have to use some English, but really only some English uh, this evening. But I'll make my introduction in English. Um, I'm very sorry for those people who were not with us at the daytime because we had really a great symposium, very interesting and uh, inspiring um, presentations here and discussions. But um, I'm happy that you are here now so that you can see and hear one of the best poetresses in Estonia right now. Kristina Ehin. For those who were not here before, I will make a small uh, introduction and tell something about Kristina and then also about uh, Sim, her uh, silver, her husband. Kristina Ehin is uh, one on is an Estonian poet and short story writer. She has an MA in comparative and Estonian folklore from the University of Tartu. And in her native Estonian, she, she has to date published six volumes of poetry, three books of uh, short stories, and a, a retelling of uh, South Estonian fairy tales. She has also written two uh, theatrical productions as well as poetic, imaginative uh, radio broadcasts, one of which has also been released as a CD. You can see it uh, on the exhibit here. Uh, she was one Estonian's. She has won Estonian's most prestigious poetry prize for Kaitsala collection, a book of poem and uh, journal entries written during a year spent as a nature reserve warden on an otherwise uninhibited island, Mohni, uh, in Estonia's north coast. Uh, she has published uh, seven books of poetry and three of prose in English translations, and we praised very much Silmar Lehtbere for that because he's her, uh, Christina's personal translator. Um, Christina's plays and uh, broadcasts have, be, have also been translated into English, and her work, poetry and prose, appears regularly in leading English language literary magazines and anthologies. She is a highly acclaimed performer of her poetry, prose and drama and travels extensively around Estonia and abroad to perform her work, sometimes accompanied by musicians. She lives in Tartu now uh, with Silver and her son. Uh, uh, about Silver, she comes from Pernuma. Uh, he comes from Pernuma. He studied uh, ethnomuseology, or ethnomusic, actually, at Viljandi Academy, that's at Tartu University, Viljandi Academy. He has been um, making music in different uh, groups. Um, this year, there is a first um, album, his, uh, his album, you can buy it here, uh, also with uh, Christina's to English trans translations, and um, what else? They are both very special. And uh, Christina is wearing a very special dress. Maybe you could start moving here now so they can see what, what you have on. This dress has a story. The idea, that's Christina's idea, to have, to have a dress which is actually a Sukupu, family tree. So you can see eight generations of uh, four mothers. There are no four fathers on this dress, but uh, her four mothers. 35? Yes. And the dress, the idea is Christina's, but the dress was made by very talented and uh, also famous designer Retaus. But uh, we are here for your 
poetry tonight. So please, Christina. Kuidas ma siia sain? Tuleb alustada päris alguses. Kus ma alustada seda ümber jutustust? Kas sealt, kus alustasime üle ookeni lennutust? Kõigepealt muidugi peaksime selgeks tegema seda. Mitu inimest teisti, kellest üldse aru saab. No kuidas ma siia sain? Need, kes mõistavad eesti keelt, võiksid midagi nalja ka teha. No naer, mina ongi juba väga hea, see eristab seda, et seda aru saada. Juba hakkangi aru saama. Okei, I can say something in English also. My school also had English lessons. So good. So how many of you don't understand Estonian? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 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 I tell you, I tell you, this of for five of you, but I tell how I, how I came here, how I came to be here. So, good as my CS, I know how I came to be here, oh, well, it's a question of all, oh, well, you start from the very beginning, so, from the very, very beginning, there was nothing, oh, there was not a piece of land, there was nothing, and so the story, how the creation of the world, yeah, say, only, Tartimsmaad ja veesisse saar kolm põõsast lahjast mulle sai siis idanema ja tuli see veel lind kõik läks kui pidi minema kuu tähed päike munadest ja pea sisse meel mis kõnele piga ühele et 
te misa te no te misa te ya sa sin acusa sa sin acuma sin acusa y ya no cuidas masía sa y no cuidas masía sa y cuidas masía sa y no te que cuidas masía sa y so I shortly told the story about it the creation of the Estonian mythical world so it was simple there was a land piece of land and there was a three bushes and then got comes a fly a bird and lay a fly there three eggs and from these eggs there was a sun and the stars and the moon and the sky and all the mind in your head no the kudos masia sign but by asking kudos masia sign kudos ma how I came to be here I don't know what I know I started from a very little farm from the countryside of near the border of Estonia of the seashore and Latvia. Hello Latvian Sveiki, hello Latvian Sveiki, but good as Masias, I know how that I came to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So these people who live in the countryside are in a quite good situation because they have very much junk in the yards and in the backyards. I have the oldest farm in my village. In this village is called Treimani. Tri, Treiman, Storf, it means three men's village. I'm from the one man, son, 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 you know. I'm for coming from one line of this village cre creatures, but so I just wanted to tell that uh, there's a junkyard in my back. Yes, yeah, so I just went to music school and learned the normal instruments like everybody does. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I realized if I wanted to come be here, I wanted to come to Toronto, I wanted to go travel to USA, then I don't need to only play the clarinet or the drums, just go to junkyard and get what you Wow, no good as Masia sign, no good as Masia sign, no good as Masia sign, no good as Masia sign. Of course, you can't deny that you have to also take a beautiful wife to be able to come here. No good as Masia sign, no good as Masia sign, good as Masia sign, no good as good as Masia sign. Good evening. This is really impossible. I thought we had everything planned, but it comes out in a very different way all the time with silver. <laughs> silver just introduced uh, himself, and 
And I have chosen a poem to introduce myself. It is um, a poem actually dedicated to a famous Estonian astronomer, Jan Einasto, who has uh, this uh, theory, I'm sure you've heard, about our universe being in a, a shape of a honeycomb. And it's so world famous a uh, theory that um, when I was talking to him, he said, uh, it's so obvious, it just is like that. But there's a poem dedicated to, to him. I am the big, drowsy queen bee of a honeycomb universe who sleeps alone in her beehive silent bed amid the dark of winter. I feel the restless lines in the hand of this universe. I have crept through each of its black holes. When spring comes, I bring a thousand larvae into the world. Drunk on my Andromeda milk, they stagger out of the hive to swing on the opening blossoms of the cosmos to roll light's pollen into the hot coal of night sky. Olen kärja kujulise universumi suur unina ema mesilene, kes magab üksi oma taru vaikusest voodis, kes et tumedat talve. Tunnen selle ilmaruumi rahutuid käejooni. Olen roomanud läbi igade musta augu. Kevade tulekul toon ilmale tuhat vastset. Mu Andromeda piimast purjus tuigärdavad nad tarust välja, et kiikuda kõiksuse avaneval õiagübaral, et veeratada valguse tolm öötaeva tuliseks sõeks. And the second program I chose to introduce myself, it's a childhood memory, and I have added nothing, it's just a memory. It is like it is, and it became a poem. Um, On palav päev Brezhnevi ajal ja mina alles väike tüdruk, sinises sitseelikus. Põgenen läbi kollase viljapõllu suurelt suurte inimeste sünnipäeva peolt, kus süldid sulasid pikkadel peolaudadel ja mu õed ja tädipojad olid kadunud võrkiigest ja marjapõõsaste strükkavasse naeru. Ja siis jõuan äkki maha jäetud maa majani. Ühest katkisest kastist leian sihvaka piibu, mis lõhnab vanade meeste järele, veel vanemate kui vanaise. Must, magus, mõru piib, üha hirmutavalt vana, haige ja võib olla juba surnud mehe huulte vahelt, mahtus mu taskusse. Ja kogu õhtu, kiikudes, tukkudes ja maasika torti süües, Tundsin tema toredat, musta ja vagurat vart oma higises peos. Ja üks luuletus, kust me võtsime tänase õhtu pealkirja iga hetk on kaev, every moment is a well. The title is from this poem. Olla ühe aegselt sündinu ja sünnitaja, ere päikese paista ja tuul, mis lahutab mõtlejate meeli. 
olla ühe aegselt rohulõhn ja lauliku silmad. Vabameelses jälitab mind musta märana. Mägeda õhk, mägeda õhk, jahuta mu kuuma vaid silmi. Iga hetk on kaev, sügav ja selge. Olla ühe aegselt klaver ja klaverdaja. Uin on tärkavaid tähti lugedes. Üks, kaks. Olla ühe aegselt kaktus ja Eesti maa. Nõela varmastus, mis eraldab mind Euroopast. Iga hetk on kaev, sügav ja selge. Tule taeva taguseid mägesid lugema. Üle meie purjatab kuu, see lehviva lakaga lõukoer ja mitte miske ei mahenda meie mürkmusti silmad eri. Iga hetk on kaev, sügav ja selge. To be at one and the same time newborn child and childbearer, dazzling sunshine and the wind that diverts thinkers, To be at one and the same time the smell of grass and the eyes of a bard. Freedom of mind follows me as a black mare. Mountain air, mountain air, cool my steering eyes. Every moment is a well, deep and clear. To be at one and the same time, piano and pianist. I fall asleep counting nascent stars. One, two. To be at one and the same time a cactus and Estonia. Stinging love that sets me apart from Europe. Every moment is a well, deep and clear. Come count the hills beyond the sky. Above us the moon is sailing that lion with a flowing mane, and nothing will mellow the poison black pupils of our eyes. Every moment is a well, deep and clear. I originally come from Rapla. It's a small market town in the middle of Estonia. It's a big um, secret of history, uh, how I was born there, as most of the children from my generation um, are actually not born where their roots are in Estonia. And maybe that's one reason why I made this dress that mostly consists of my foremothers and their imaginable, my imaginable form fathers as well, but you know, a man doesn't suit on, on, on a dress really. So it's only mothers. So half of them come from Western Estonia, another part from Thousand Estonia and Baltic Germans as well. And I just wanted to understand where I come from. Estonia seems so tiny, looking from here, behind the ocean. But um, when you are there, it means so important, whether you are from Rapla or Kullama or Tartu or Kuusalu. And uh, mm, it's a poem about my, about my back garden in Rapla my childhood back garden. The garden is full of the song of my white feet. My soul is like these threads of spider silk, tense crisscross between two apple trees. Before dawn, bodies are heavy. Sleep presses eyelids down. You sleep, eyelashes resting on your cheeks. Morning has not yet touched the fields of your dreams, the lonely open land of your subconscious. 
sleep, sleep, your arms around me. Here, the night is safe and sound. The garden is crisscross full of spider silk and the song of my white feet. Ja selle blokki lõpuks, in the end of this first part, I will read a, a small prose piece. It's called uh, Swan Bone City. Um, and it's written during a period of my life where I've been traveling a lot and uh, I think I was looking for a city I really like and uh, where I would li love to live. And I traveled a little bit in America and in China and in Tibet, in, in Russia, in Siberia, in Europe. And I'm not sure, I, I don't think I found this city, but in my dreams it still exists and this little piece is about it. Swan Bone City. I once saw a man at the seashore who was collecting the bones of birds from between the stones. I thought he must be an ornithologist and I was just about to pass by when something caught my eye. The man's movements were young and nimble, but the look in his eyes was more than a thousand years old. Who are you? I'm an architect and a lover, he answered. But the girl I want to marry won't have me until I've built a city that flies as high as her dreams. I've already built her a world full of cities, some of them with houses rising right up to the clouds. She always accepts the new city happily licks ice cream on park benches and walks proudly along the city streets adorned with life. But when I approach her, full of hope, she replies, this isn't it, and vanishes into the crowd. Maybe you've chosen the wrong girl, I ask doubtfully. No, there's nothing wrong with the girl. Stones are too heavy, wood burns too easily, swan bones are hollow inside, they car carry high up into the air and hold the living spirits and dreams together. This time she will get her city, the man said and bent down again over the stones. The city of swan bones. I thought as I walked away. I'd like to leave that too. Stop, 
Sita Pani Pralamashti Sita Kui Nai Toksara Ku Sita Kui Nai Toksara Ku Sita Pani Naga Pala Lippu Sita Pani Pala Lippu Sita Kui Nai Nai Yulin Sita kui neiju linti sita Ta pani naga peale purje Sita panin peale purje Sita kui neid naiste põlle Sita kui neid naiste põlle Sita purjet tan punasta merda purjet tan punasta merda oma merda oike ja ta oma merda oike ja ta rootsi merda ka ruuge ja ta rootsi merda ka ruuge ja ta paistab et Torontosse pole veel jõudnud see liikumine, et mis Eestis on praegu hästi populaarne folkmuusika, läheb uuesti noorte sekka ja if something, this happens in Estonia, somebody, especially in Vilja and the region, somebody starts to sing the old Runo song, then everybody join in. I see it in Toronto, this movement has not arrived yet. But you can, let's do the same song again and you just provige be uh, courageous with this. Teima laiva luige luista, teima laiva luige luista, luige luista, puiga puista, luige luista. Luista küüdü härja küüre, luista küüdü härja küüdü. Luista panin aga peale masti, süüda panin peale masti. Ta kui näid oksa ragu, süüda kui näid oksa. Süüda panin aga peale lippu. Sita pani peale lippu, ta kui näid nei juulinti, sita kui näid nei juulinti. Ta pani naga peale purja, sita pani peale purja, sita kui näid naiste põlle, sita kui näid naiste põlle. Sita purjetan punasta, merda purjetan punasta, merda oma merda oike ja ta oma merda oike ja ta rootsi merda ka ruuge ja rootsi merda ka ruuge. Ja korraga ju hei, 
Iso oli kulti mona lõikaja ja lõikaja ja lõikaja Ja mina olin jahu peale viskaja ja viskaja ju Ei, ei, üks läks minema, kaks läks minema Kolmas jäi lollin aga vahtima Üks läks minema, kaks läks minema Kolmas jäi lollin aga vahtima Minu isa oli kulti mona lõikaja ja lõikaja ja lõikaja Kuldi muna ees sai mina koppika ja koppika ju hei Minu isa oli kuldi muna lõikaja ja lõikaja ja lõikaja Kuldi muna ees sai mina koppika ja koppika ju hei Minu isa oli kuldi muna lõikaja ja lõikaja Iga kuldi muna ees sai mina lõikaja Isa oli kuldi muna lõikaja ja lõikaja ja lõikaja Ja mina olin jahu peale viskaja ja viskaja ju hei When I read poetry collections, I actually don't want to know um, whether the poetry or prose is about real persons or not. But with this poem from my latest collection in English and in Anasona and in a single breath, I just have to say that this is inspired by a real image of Silver when he was lying in the attic in, in dust and sunlight, creating his new CD. And uh, I just, uh, one glimpse, one uh, glimpse, uh, glimpse on him made me write this poem. Just the starting point is he. Ja ma mõtlesin seda, et kui elus vahel nagu vaatad teist inimest ja tunned, et ta on täiesti vaba. Ära nüüd seal kolist ja palun. Kuule ikka ka. Ei, see on väga tähtis, kuule. Ära siis tee muud asja. Ja 
et vaatat inimest. Ah, ma ei räägi siis. Ja vaatat teist inimest. Ja seda aru, et, et ta on vaba ja sa armastad teda. Et see on kõige ilusam tunne. See vabadus ja armastus koos ühes tundes, ühes inimeses. See, see on selle luulatuse see läht. Punkt. Ja, palun. Pikutud päikese paistelisel pööningul sirutad end välja. Valgus virvendab tolmustel palkidel. Elad päevalille seemnetest. Parastad terveid päevi, et olla endale lähemal. Jää sula paia taga kraavis ja lumi saab mereks. See kevad tiir läb kajakana su linna kohal ja maandub viimaks su katusele. Sul on peegeldus, sul on vari. Oled vaba ja veel suudad sa võidelda gravitatsiooniga. Ajas põleme tuhaks. Kaduvik paneb kõdunema me luud, kuid seni ei lase me kellelgi ennast kamandada. Päike teeb imet, teeb juuksed kuldseks, paneb varjud võitlema tegelikusega. Hing tahab lahti, päike teeb imet, teeb juuksed kuldseks, vastu valgust on meie tuum tume. Ja koor sädele. Sa rändesid teisele poole maagera, et näha see kvoijat. Siis hakkasid igatsema mind. Aga vulkaanid olid käima läinud. Ja kuigi ma õmblasin sulle seitsme penikoorma need samused. Ei saa sa tulla. Kuigi tegin sulle suure surematuse särgi, ei mahu sa sellesse. Harmas. Oled vaba, nagu mina ja kajakas. Varastad terveid päevi. Sul on peegeldus, sul on vari ja päike teeb juuksed kuldseks. Juhtus nii, et kui ma lõpetasin ülikooli magistrantuuri, Siis mulle pakuti, et minna saarevahiks üksikule Mohni saarele. So we are nature reserve warden in Mohni Island. And I spent a year there, year there. It was, so to say, an uninhabited highland with no shops, no electricity in the beginning. And it was one of the most beautiful periods of my life. And I didn't plan to write anything there, but it happened so that I wrote this book, Kaitse Ala, with my pieces of my diary as well here, and uh, just a couple of poems from this collection. Um, it's... Um, <clears throat> Straight from here. Väljas on lopsakas juuli, on putkede vohav püha ja haise vadru ameleb kividel. Väljas on lopsakas juuli ja mina ei taha astuda sellesse. Tahan jääda kuivade kuuskade öö käiku sinuga kätel kõndi ja sina sõprust sosistada, hingata halli rahu oma värisevatesse sõõrmetesse. Okkad hoiatavad meid, on ohtlike sõnu, lämmatavaid vöösid ja mürgitatud õunu, aga on ka kajakaid, kelle valguses ei või kahelda. Kuule mind, öö kuubede kandja, Kätel kõndija, vastu hakkaja, augusti aeg algas. And another poem. 
I will read uh, both in Estonian and English, and um, it's um, no. I will read it in. I will read it in Estonian, but I will tell you that it is a poem about about cleaning uh, the seashore there and it's called After the Storm and this storm really happened in January everybody know it as a big January storm and when I went out in this paradise island that had been so clean it was suddenly in the morning full of the garbage of all the world's oceans it was so, so much full of all this crap that I just had to write a poem about it. And um, it's, um, it was my job to, to clean the island, to keep it clean. And I found it a great duty and a mission, really, to keep clean one of these at least one spot of um, this universe is at least one tiny spot, two and a half kilometers. So I had two months cleaning it up. And yes, everything in this poem really happened. Parastormi. Hommikul korjan rannast. Pudeli kilde ja voideksi karpe, vodka veera pudeleid, purke, mille sikka veel loksub ja lõhneb ammu nahka pandud see slökkide marinaad, katki astutud päikese prille, korjan ranna raadiote patareisid, ponakvasid ja eviane, karastusjookide korke ja õlle purke, nii palju, nii palju, nii palju, plast massi ja kilet, plekki ja klaasi, Ja mitte ühtegi sõrmust ja mitte ainustki kuldse kõrvaga karikat. Korjan ja korjan ja korjan, sel selgel hommikul suurda musta prügi kotti, vene aegsete poe nukkuda käsi ja jalgu, kummist pingviinipoja pea, vene piirivalvuri mütsi, nii väikse oli talles laps. Vahtkumi tükid kerged nagu liplikad, pagevad mu külmast kohmetunud kätte vahelt. Ei ühtegi sõrmust, ei ühtegi karikat, aga nii palju muud. Kummis täis puhutav naise keha, mis on mõeldud kasutamiseks. Vees, ujudas, auke täis nagu juust, rinna tõhu tühjalt trippu. Hambutu karju, mis võimetu suu lahti, siniseks võõbatud laugud all, veel sinisemad silmad, tarvitamist tühjust täis. Missugune mees kaisutas ja kasutas sind, enne kui torm süleles su siia, selle selge hommiku suurda musta prügi kotti. Kisun ära õhukese kile oma õrnadelt ranna roosidelt, Raagu sokkalised oksad tuleb puhastada, enne kui kõva kevadine tuul puhub veel puhkemata pungade peale. Puhastaned muhkad roosid ei peaks kasvama läbi, selle teab kust kohale lennanud, lipitseva ja lipendava, hukaste külge klammerdunud kile. Käed saavad torkeid ja hommik otsa, aga loojangul jooksen koju. Sõrmed sõrmustest rasked, käed kaardus ümber karika. Kas te nüha veel on? And here is a poem... About um, mm, how is it in English? Tulid. 
to simply eat. Quarrels, yes. And I find that quarrels can be very good because quarrels are always a sign of identity crisis. And um, here, ah, oh. delete, delete, delete. <laughs> you have very poetic allusions. <laughs> this is a very ground to earth poem. And um, yeah. Oh, the endless battles with you hellish and compelling. I exalt the turbulent waters of conflict when the invincible armada of my ships has raised its sails and your elephants come slowly and inexorably over my Alps. I'm at war with you over my free Pusta grasslands, at war with the aid of all the weak guns of my heart. Last night there was an exceptional fray. We both slept in a house, feared to be haunted, but nothing happened all night long. Only creeping fear had fired the shells of our thoughts. Again, I had to recruit the spies of my heart to investigate how you waste the angular banknotes of my feelings the golden copics of my dreams. In what gambling hell did you haggle away my desire to be eternally new before you? Cannon to the left, fire, infantry, attack, archers at the ready. But oh, before a single shot reached you, you turned into a slumberer a drowsy dragon who slithers over my impassioned soldiers, yawns and falls asleep, snout on his front claws, his whole body arrayed and protected in the armor of sleep. Morning comes, frosty and clear. Clothe yourselves in white, my faithful hornsmen. Straight after dawn, we will pick up the trail of this loathsome slitherer, this abominable monster. And um, just to end up with something um, more beautiful, I will read uh, a poem inspired by Livonian Livonian mythology. I really like uh, one mythological creature there. She's called uh, the Sea Mother. And she's a very protective woman. Uh, she warns her daughters uh, against human men. And, um, yeah. Merest tulevad lehmad, selle aegade alguse hommikul, sinirohelised lehmad, udarad soolast merepiima täis ja mereema ajab nad kaldesse, mererohust vitsaga. Merineitsid, tulge lehmi hoidma ja ennast hoidma iharate õitsiliste eest. Sada sinirohelist lehma olgu sügiseks tagasi siin kirevate kivide lahes. Udus säragu nende sarved ja sädelgu teie silmad. Aga südamed hoidke selged ja jahedad nagu hommiku kaste. Teie ei harju iial inim naiste eluga. 
see paneb südamele kütked, unistused ei täitu ja tunnetes tõuseb vaid tuska. Inimesed on ilusad ja julmad, nad hoiavad peredesse nagu putukad, korjavad öösid ja unede kulda ja hommikul pillavad kõik käest. Saada neist kellegi omaks, tähendab olla ühele inim tähele ähvardavalt lähedal, aga teie silmad on nagu ilma meri, tähed upuvad sinna. Meri neitsid, tulge lehmi hoidma, aga südamed hoidke selged ja jahedad nagu hommiku kaste. Did you get inspired yes. writing a poem? I don't drink much coffee, but uh, sometimes before a performance I drink, so it's uh, all, all your inspirations and um, uh, all the emotions come uh, much uh, in a bigger flow. And when you mentioned the January storm, I just remember it from the year 2005, and I remember I was in the center of Estonia in my, uh, my town, Viljandi, and uh, holding, the, holding my nose against the window, and uh, there was the day that my favorite, Saare uh, Puu, how's Saar in English? I, not island, but I'm a tree. Ash, ash tree. My favorite ash tree was uh, go, uh, where uh, Murduma crashing uh, uh, in front of uh, William the White Church. And, and uh, just, uh, it just reminded all my dreams about, uh, I, I live in the center of Estonia and uh, often see dreams about my uh, home village. And I, these are, are these dreams that uh, I see the uh, stormy sea comes over the uh, main uh, street of Tremani, of the old uh, Monte, old uh, road of Tremani. And uh, I just uh, remember the, how in the, uh, I was pity that I couldn't be in this day in Tremani because uh, all, when I went a couple of days before, after, then I saw the, how my uh, relatives uh, lived by the sea and how the storm had brought the Pugur uh, wood uh, house, wood shed against his uh, house totally and how the storm drowned a hundred sheep uh, of the uh, Vallavanem. As county mayor or something like this and uh, just brought back a lot of memories and now we moved even farther to the inner land was it my poem or the coffee now what inspired you no 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 no, no. that's all together but uh, i wanted to show the uh, instrument i brought with me and uh, uh, this instrument is uh, mm, traditional in my, in one way, not in instrumental way, but in the. Uh, actually, do you recognize what is the? If you would take the nails out, what is the original piece of this wood? It goes like. Uh, Here's a poem everywhere. You can see the. You can see the <laughs> original, it's uh, placed like this. It's, it's used in the near the sea areas. Maybe historians know. Fishermen use it. Not <laughs> yeah, to get out the boots. Oh, work. Very good. Are you from uh, the shore? Yeah. From where? Yeah, Latna. Yeah. It's Virgo uh, where the fishermen used to clean the nets and uh, repair the nets. Have you used one? <coughs> Have you ever used one, Virgo Hark? <coughs> hmm. And uh, um, 
I started uh, with my, I call them fantasy instruments. I started with uh, washing up bowls from a sauna, uh, from my village sauna and, uh, you know, African calabas, pumpkins, the traditional African percussion. So I made the Estonian version, as we don't have the drums tradition in Estonia. And from the same sauna, from the attic, uh, years after, I uh, found this Virgu Hark. And uh, it was without this piece, without this piece, and I didn't know what it is actually. I just say, thought that, oh, it's a good piece of wood, I can make my nail harf out of this. But my uncle told me that, um, that uh, this is Virgu Hark, and he made me this also, that it would be complete. complete. And uh, he also told me that uh, he has a story with this same thing that uh, our relative who lived the next, 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 next house uh, for near the shore uh, was uh, something like 70, 70 years old. And uh, she called uh, my uncle who was 10 years old then. She called and said that uh, come to my house and uh, climb to the attic and then you have to find a piece of uh, fisherman's equipment that would uh, uh, have the traits of uh, holding some uh, valuable inside because um, the old, old aunt, uh, she had a letter from his brother who, was, uh, who had escaped uh, to America uh, during the war and uh, he was a rich man and he left some behind and some took with him. I know even that he took a lot of with him in the first ship, what sank. So he went back and uh, find another ship and then he succeeded to uh, America. But uh, the, in the letter there was written that uh, in the, some kind of fisherman equipment there is something valuable hidden inside. And uh, so the old lady said to climb to the attic that find the piece of, uh, uh, and he find the Virgo Hark and they thought it, it, that's it. Mm. But they didn't see something uh, valuable stacking out from there, some gold or something. But they, they started to see that there is a, this kind of um, cut here. And um, when they started to research and the 10 year old uncle brought the Virgo Hark down and the old lady took an axe and the, her, uh, her hands got very steady and she started to cut this uh, uh, part and it seemed there is something inside and they were cutting and cutting and, and they had like this uh, pulled out a roll of uh, dollars and the true story and the first time it's like uh, collecting the heritage the first time my uncle told the story I was like, uh, uh, really, you know, I couldn't believe it. And then after a couple of months, I asked again, tell a story again, that how exactly it was. And, uh, I, and the end, in the end, I asked, so really there was like a, a roll of $100, like a lot of $100. So he said that, well, actually, I don't know where they like $100, but they were dollars, all right, because uh, the woman's hand was so quick when she saw the dollars, <laughs> and nobody could count these dollars. <laughs> so, Virgo Hark, uh, just uh, 100 meters from the, uh, from the actual this story place, and I'm not a fisherman, so uh, I made an instrument out of this.
I couldn't take the choir with me, so please, could you join with, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to add that when the uh, border guard saw this instrument stretching out of Silver's uh, luggage, then uh, he asked, uh, what is this? And Silver said, it's a musical instrument, and I haven't seen so good night With a smile full of... Sorry. Yeah. Smile full of compassion. <laughs> full of, yeah. Yeah, for, for Christine also, because we, we travel quite a lot in Estonia in my small car, and if you have this instrument in your car, it's uh, quite dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I also uh, got inspired by, by coffee and a little bit of your tiny instrument as well and uh, to, to, to choose the next piece and um, the piece has luckily luckily nothing to do with you uh, it's, but it's called uh, Walker on Water and it's about a uh, woman with a very special hobby Pirat, please help me to decide which language will I read. Both. Okay. It's quite a long story. Vettel Kundia. Minu raamatust viimane mono kaamlane. Esimene osa. 
Sellel mehel, kellest sai hiljem minu obikaasa, oli väga palju austa ja annasid. Nad kõik ihaldasid jaani just niisama palju kui mina. Pole midagi põnevamat, kui ihaldada meest, kes sind isegi mitte ei märka. Jaan on kõrgesti haritud mees. Ta töötab teaduste akadeemia kliimamuutuste seire osakonna juhatajana. Kõik tema usta ja annad on püüdnud talle intellektuaalses plaanis muljet avaldada. Jaani ajud on nii erakordsed. Aga mina võitsin ta südama väga lihtsel ja koguni primitiivsel viisil. Jooksin ühe lööse lihu alasti tõuksa taha. Ütlesin, et öösel ujumas käi ja see oli keegi mu riidet pihta pannud. Kõik läks? Nägu läks. Nüüd siis oli mina tema uksas sisse pääsenud. Mu konkurendid aga konutesid ikka veel lugemisse aalides, jumarlaudade ääres, kõiksugu seminärides. Hiilgasin õnnest. Läksime elama Jaani esivanemate tallu. See oli Mardi Jaani talu, mis asus Läänemere kitsukeses lahesopis kahe maanina vahel. Jaani austa ja annad, aga ei kadunud kuhugi. Sellegi poolest oli minu usk Jaanisse ja meie armastusse erakordselt visa. Mardi Jaani rannadalus hakkasin jälle tegelema oma lemmik harrastusega, veepeal kõndimisega. See nõudis sama pimedat usku ja nõtket tugevust nagu armastus Jaani vastu. Kui Jaan varahommikuti tööle läks, hakkasin tüüne, et mere pinda pidi astuma. See tuli mul juba üsna hästi välja, aga kaldal kaugamal, kaldast kaugamal haaras mind hirm ja vajusin põhja nagu kivi. Sain aru, et kogu kunst on võimes oma aju täiesti välja lülitada, kergusega, mis siis saabub, võib imet teha. Sumasin kaldale ja alustasin uuesti udu, sulg, kergete jaladustatega. Mitte millelegi mõtlemata puudutasin päkkadega hõbedast hommiku valguse peegeldust. Olin rahulik, kerge, kindel ja keskendunud. Jõudsin lahe keskele. Kahel pool sirutusid maani naade tipud. Olin jõudnud kaugamale kui kunagi varem. Tänaseks aitab, keer on aeglased ringi ja kõnnin kaldele tagasi. Ka minu abielu on nagu vee peal kõndimine. See on kerge, kui jalad põhja ulatuvad. See on mäng, mis on ainult natuke ohtlik, kui kõik on alles alguses ja väikesed kalda lained noolivad mõnuga su ranna riba. Jooksin ihu alasti oma tulevase kaasa ukse taha, ega teadnud, ei aimanud uneski, kui sügavaks kõik läheb. Teine osa. Hiljuti avastasin, et mu mehe pea käib kukla tagant lahti. Ma polnud seda märganud parem. Seal on üks luuk. Kui Jaan pärast väsitavad tööpäeva koju tuleb, teeb ta luugi lahti ja võtab oma ajud välja. Need tossavad laua peal. Jaan aga sirutab jalat tiivenil välja ja vaatab mind õnnelike ja uimaste silmadega. Kolmas osa. Tahtsin ju tarka ja haritud meest, aga sain ühe ajud, et ta jõmmi. Ühel päeval ärkas minus kiivas kihk. Mõtlesin, et kui mina Jaani ajudest osa ei saa, siis ärgu neid parem olgugi. Pesu väel haaresin äkida ajud sülle ja pissin pimedust ja vinget tuult trotsides ranna poole jooksu. Astusin kõrgetele laine harjadele. Panin mängu kogu oma tahte jõu, et südame kloppi, mist vaigistada, mõtta tegevus peatada ja tormaval merel tasakaalu hoida sügavamale, veel sügavamale. Mitte usku kaotada ka jalgade ette vaadata, Kahe neemenine vahel, sügaviku kohal, läsin ajud lahti. Aga need ei mõelnudki põhja vajuda. Need hulpisid ja tantsisklasid laine harjadel, nagu ma isegi. Jaan vaatas seda rannas vaikides pealt. Mul hakkas äkki temast ja endast hale. See tunne tegi mind nõrgaks ja raskeks. Mul hakkas hirm. Püüdsin aru saada, kust see hirm tuleb. Vajusin põlvini sisse. Püüdsin paaniliselt mõtte tegevust peatada, juba sumasin puusada, nii siis juba kaela nii jääkülmas vees. Siit ma juba kaldal ei uju. Sirutasin käsi taeva poole, ahmesin õhku. Äki hakkas mulle kätta midagi pehmet ja sooja, 
surusin selle tugevasti vastu rindu. Need olid jaani ajud. Need hoidsid mind äkki pinnal nagu korkvest. Klammärdusin nende külge, kuni lained meid kaldale heitsid. Olin omadega täiesti läbi ja külmast kange. Jaan kiskus oma aju, mu krampi kiskunud käte vahelt välja ja pani paika. Kallis, sul on ju külm, ütles ta ning pani oma sooja kuue mulle ümber. Seerel võttis ta mu sülle ja kandis koju. Neljas osa. Olen püüdnud pinnal hoida oma armastust jaani vastu. Tööl ollas on ta tark ja austa ei anna teist tihedalt ümbritsetud. Kodus Mardi Jaanil on ta täiesti aju vaba. Siin olen ta lainud mina. Aga minu veepinnal kõndimise oskus hakkab järki järgult alla käima. Pärast seda, kui ma Jaani ajusi tuputada, sise tänu tema ajudele vaevu ellu jäin. Ei julge ma enam niisama kergesti vette peale minna. Mu enese usk sai tugeva hoobi ja ma ei püsi enam hästi pinnal. On aasta pimeda ei maeg ja kõik näib kuidagi lootusetu. Meri on kinni külmunud ja vetel kõndijal pole sinna asja. Aga nii pea kui jääd lähevad, kavatsen uuesti proovida. Oma annet arendades arendan oma armastust. Üht teisete pole olemas. Walker on water. The man who later became my husband had many female admirers. They all desired him just as much as I did. There's nothing more exciting than desiring a man who doesn't even notice you. Jan is a highly educated man. He works as a director of the climate change monitoring department at the Academy of Science. All of his female admirers have tried to make an impression on him on an intellectual plane, as Jan's brains are so exceptional. But I won his heart in a very simple and altogether primitive way. One night I ran to his door stark naked. I said someone had made off with my clothes while I'd gone swimming in night. Everything went as it went. So now I'd got in through his door, but my competition still hung about in reading rooms, at round tables, and all sorts of seminars. I glowed with happiness. We went to live at Jan's an ancestral farm. This was Mordi Jani farm, located at a rather narrow cove between two headlands on the Baltic Sea. But Jan's female admirers didn't go anywhere. Even so, my belief in Jan and our love was exceptionally tenacious. At Mordi Jani coastal farm, I began again to indulge in my favorite pursuit, walking on water. This demanded the same blind faith and supple strength as loving Jan did. When Jan went to work early mornings, I started stepping along the still surface of the sea on the shallow water. I was already managing this quite well, but further from shore I was gripped by fear. And then I sank to the bottom like a stone. I understood that the whole art lay in your ability to completely switch off your brain. You can work wonders with a lightness then that, that then comes. I splashed my way to shore and started again with dow and light liftings of my feet. Without thinking about anything, I touched the silver reflection of morning light with the ball of my foot. I was calm, light, sure, 
and focused. I reached the middle of the cove. The tips of the headlands stretched out on either side. I'd reached further than ever before. That's enough for today. I turn around slowly and walk back to shore. My marriage is like walking on water too. It's easy if my feet can reach the bottom. It is a game with little danger when everything is just starting out and the little waves lick your shoreline with pleasure. Second part. Lately I have discovered that my husband's head opens at the back. I hadn't noticed it before. There's a hatch there. When Jan comes home after a tiring day at work, he opens the hatch and takes his brain, brains out. They steam on the table. But Jan stretches his legs out on the sofa and looks at me with his happy, drowsy eyes. Third part. I wanted an intelligent and educated man, but what I got was a brainless oaf. One day a jealous urge awoke in me. I thought that if I can't share in Jan's brains, then they might as well not exist. I suddenly grabbed his brains into my arms and took off running toward the shore in spite of the darkness and the biting wind. I stepped on the high crests of the waves. I put all my willpower to work to silence the thumping of my heart, stop my thought process and keep my balance on the stormy sea. Further out into the deep, still further. Don't lose faith or look at your feet. Oh, at the depth between the two headlands, I let go of Jan's brains. But they had no intention of sinking to the bottom. They bobbed and danced on the crests of the waves, just like me. Jan stood watching me silently from the shore. I suddenly began to feel sorry for him and myself. That feeling made me weak and heavy. I became frightened. I tried to understand where that fear comes from. I sank in up to my knees. In a panic, I strove to stop my thought process. I was already splashing about up to my hips, then up to my neck in ice-cold water. I would never be able to st swim to shore from here. I stretched my hands out toward the sky and gasped for air. All at once, there was something soft and warm in my hand. I pressed it tightly to my breast. It was Jan's brains. Suddenly they, keep, they were keeping me on the surface like a life jacket. I clung to them until the waves had cast us onto the shore. I felt utterly done for and stiff with cold. Jan tore his brain from between my hands, bent with cramp, and set it in its place. You are cold, my dear he said, and put his warm coat around me. After that, he picked me up in his arms and carried me home. Fourth part. I've been trying to keep my love for Jan afloat. At work, he's intelligent and closely surrounded by female admirers. At home, in Mardi Jani, he's totally brain-free. Here, I'm the only one he has. But my ability to walk on the surface of the water is beginning to diminish bit by bit. After just barely managing to stay alive thanks to Jan's brains while I was trying to drown them, I don't dare to go I don't dare to go under the water anymore as easily as before. My belief in myself took quite a beating and I don't stay on the surface so well anymore. It is the darkest time of the year, and everything somehow seems so hopeless. The sea has frozen over, and a walker on water has no business there. But as soon as the ice goes, I'm going to try again. In developing my gift, I develop my love. Neither can exist without the other.
kui esimene lugu, mis ma laulsin, oli kuidas ma siia sain, siis pole selleks kepastlik lõpsõnaks öelda, kui Kristiina rääkis nüüd veed eest, mida mööda minna, siis minu selle suve kõige suurem elamus oli, kui ma elan Viljandis, siis seal minu maja tagant võeti tee ülesse, minu maja tagant sepa tänav ja see munakivi tee pandi sinna uus sillutis ja torud alla, aga see, kui kaevate sinna suur kraav, siis oli näha need kihid, kuidas kõige vanem kiht oli siis savi. Siis tuli aasta 1200, kus üks arheolog andis meile ka paar kildu aastast 1200, kus minu maja koha peal oli siis suur potti põletustöökoda ja kõik see Viljandi linn pidi olema täis need kihte. Ja siis 1200, siis tuli 1500 aasta Ja siin oli täpselt selle tee jälle oli teine tee, täpselt teise stiiliga tehtud, aastast 1500 munakivi tee. Ja peale seda siis tuli kiht tuhka liivisajast ja siis tuli siis see uus tee. Ja see vana munakivi tee oli vahepeal pommitatud Vene vägeda poolt suurduki kuulid, aga puruks need suurduki kuulid olid ikka veel seal tee all ennast sees. Ja see praegu pani mind järjest, üks lugu on mul valmimes, mida ma küll ei laula, kuid kus on sõnad, et tee all on tee ja esi isad. Ja kuidas ka selle tee peale, kuidas me siia sain, kuidas me siia saime, et meil on tahutu rõõm olla teega koos siin ja et mis teed mööda me oleme ka tulnud, et meie, et ei olete siin. Ja see tee, mis millest iga põlvkond lisab sinna teele oma kihi, et meil on tõesti suur rõõm ja suur au teiega alla, alla siin täna. Ja viimane lugu, äkki Kristiina, sa laulad selle lõpuloo. Ja siis ma tulen sellega Naela Piljaga juurde sinna. See regilaulu lõpulugu. Teie imelisele koorile, kes te juba ennast olete nii sisse laulnud täna juba. Regilaulu laulmiseks tuleb ikkagi kontsakinga teemaldada. Ühte käivad meid tähäled Ühte käivad meid tähäled, meid tähäled, meid tägeled, meid tähäled, meid tägeled. Ühte sünni vaad südamed, ühte sünni vaad südamed. Meie ühed hõimu poolest, meie ühed hõimu poolest. Samad me südame poolest, samad me südame poolest. Ühte käivad meid tähäled, ühte käivad meid tähäled, meid tähäled, meid tägeled, meid tähäled, meid tägeled. Ühte laulud lange nebad, Ühte laulud lange nevad, ühte sünni vaad südamed, ühte sünni vaad südamed, meie ühed hõimu.
Sr. Toronto, oh, Linda. Te je Agnes po ne psi se kuma maja. Ilma seppa Kuuda mähib kulla ka Pärnu Päevado Pärnu linnast Aga kui mina hakkan laulema ja Laulema ja laskema ja siis kogu see Toronto eestlaste kamp ei peada kuulama ja So this regular old was invented this way. Invented this way. So la 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 Tuleb varsti vaata, ma ei jõu Minna pea tuleb varsti vaata, ma ei jõu Kus see laps need laulud saanud Kus see laps need laulud saanud Hulluke sõnad oo saanud Hulluke sõnad oo saanud Kus see laps selle naela pilli sai jõu Kus see laps selle naela pilli sai jõu Are you sure this is a legal instrument? I mean, are you sure this is legal instrument? Are you sure this is legal instrument? I hope no problems will come with officials. I know no problems will come with officials. I had only one problem in Canada. I was walking barefoot, but um, I hope this uh, problem uh, is in my shoes now. That's all right. But la 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 See you all back in Estonia. I hope to see you all back in Estonia. No, maybe someday we come back here. Yo, oh no, the yeah, 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 Christina, you know the, how to say all the thanks the things. Seda noort hane, täname pirat noort hane, täname teid seda kuulamasta, täname meid täna kuulamasta, kõike vastu võtamast, kõike vastu võtamast, täname Tartu kollegi.
Kas te teate kuulda, kas Kristiina sa armostad mängid? Te teed ei taha mängida üldse. Me ei alles harjutame, nagu see tuuri lõpuks me plaanid, me mõned lood koos isistud, aga aga ma arvan, et me oleme ära teinud võibolla natuke näe. Mind tabas praegu helik hirmu kramp. When we move together, it was obligatory, she has to learn some instruments, so she has to practice every day. So you can do the... You are really full of surprises. I really hide this instrument in the far back room and locked it. I don't know where... Did you get it now? I really hope that you don't have a higher music education. Anyway, I have made some songs and some lyrics to this wild village instrument and um, it's quite warm here but far in Estonia it's getting colder already and the dark nights and more frosty mornings are creeping in and um, on this song, this poem I wrote a couple of years ago and it's called The Last Days Without Snow. Viimased lumeta päevad. on palle seal kuskil kaugel ja võõrail teil valgust on küllises kuskil aga seal pole meid Kõik 
Maudu, kus vajuda unne, mitte lihtsalt üht maja. Valgus nis elaks mu sees, nei, viimasel lumeta päevil. Kus kõik, kes ei jaksanud jääda, seisavad lahku vaid laevil. Kus kõik, kes ei jaksanud jääda, seisavad lahku vaid laevil.